Hey, welcome back to my shop. Hope everybody's uh, getting ready for some turkey, turkey, turkey. All right, gobble, gobble, gobble. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. This is supposed to be an instructional video and I'm doing all this. All right, let's get back on topic. What you just witnessed was the milling out of this piece with our home-built stiffener here for the Max NC and a 3 8 inch four-flute carbide end mill. Previously, we milled this piece out without our stiffener and with a quarter inch uh, end mill for flute carbide. Right. It's supposed to be one inch between these two flats. And we see on the first set that we're off by almost 40 thou, or 40 thou short. That means 20 thou deflection or backlash on both sides. And this one, we're off by Oh, uh, you know, if I, if I if I just squeeze on a little bit more, yeah, there we go, two thou. No, okay, so this one's probably uh, uh, we'll call it five thou. So say two and a half thou deflection on either side. That is a flipping ten times improvement. That's huge, considering all we did was add a piece of aluminum to this. That's four inches wide, two and a half inches tall. It's a bit of C-channel with a three-eighths inch uh, web or flange. I can never remember what that's called, but uh, the thickness of this portion here. 16 inches long uh, for the Max NC-15, probably a little less for anybody else. Uh, we, have the, we still have the stock uh, braces back here installed. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I have like a buck and I have I have about one dollar twenty cents in quarter twenty volts uh, because I have a tap on here and I have drill bits and stuff, so I didn't have to pay for any of that. Um, so yeah, I got like a dollar in this improvement, and it's like ten times stiffer, at least in this operation in steel. So what we have is a machine that is reasonably accurate in steel for under a thousand bucks for all of this. That's awesome. Anyway, if you want to see how it's built, stick around. This is going to be the plate we're going to use to stiffen up the uh, the y-axis a little bit, keep her from give her make her a little more rigid, keep her from bending. So what we I've done is uh, strike two lines here and here. Uh, they're both seven eighths of an inch from the edge. So this line seven eighths from this edge. This line seven eighths from this edge. B marks the back. F marks the front. Um, yeah. So all I got to do now is figure out at what interval I want my clearance holes to be uh, for the quarter 20 uh, screws I'm going to use for this particular project. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and set these to, I don't know, maybe two inches or something like that. Kind of get an idea. Walk it off. Uh, we'll scribe it, punch it, drill it, and then we'll clamp this plate to the, to the way. And uh, once again, punch and drill and tap quarter 20 thread into the actual way. All right, so let's get to that. So we'll start about two inches in from the edge and mark our first line. I think what I'll do is... Uh, Start off with these crappy calipers. Always make sure you keep a set of crappy calipers on hand. This is my only set, and they are crappy. Um, so I don't mind doing things like this to them. All right. That'll be our, our starting point. We'll start there. You also purchase a big template, sometimes you want it. By means, do that. I just, you know, feel artsy, 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 feel Now for the part my wife hates. Now for the noisy part. <laughs> that should work. I think what I'll do to, uh, We'll put a some kind of fence along the drill press on this side, uh, so that way all of these will be the same distance from that edge. Flip it around. So really, I just needed to mark the intervals 
uh, for the drill press more than anything. Alright, let's go on to the drill pressing. So now we're going to drill these out to 5 sixteenths uh, to accept these quarter 20 screws. Oh yeah. Plenty of room to mess about a little bit and be just fine. We went ahead and took off the legs uh, from here, and that's roughly the plan. We're going to clamp it uh, to this to the way, and then uh, use these as the guide uh, to punch out uh, a divot. In this surface and then go and drill and tap for quarter 20. At least that's the plan. Now in order to get that to be fairly accurate I'm going to look for something that's roughly the same diameter as this 5 16 hole and uh, put a little point on it so I can use it to mark at the very least mark uh, this little blue surface. So we need to go to the round stock bin. Right. What is that doing in there? That's where that's been. Huh. Put that over there. Okay. So something like that. It'd be nice if that was already the uh, the size I needed. Hmm. It's in here. That's probably not right. So that fits in there already quite nicely. So we'll be within a couple thou if we turn that to a point. And uh, if you're wondering about the sawdust, I may or may not have turned some wood on this metal lathe. I don't know if that's against the law or not. I hope not. I don't want to go to jail. That should work. Totally gonna work. Now we come to that all important part of every person's life. Do we just throw this on, clamp it, drill it by hand, or do we disassemble all of this, put it over on the drill press, and do it proper like? Alright, so now we're just gonna go ahead and drill these holes. And <laughs> just joke. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to take it apart, put it on the drill press, do this proper like, take our time, and hopefully have a good result at the end of this. Totally thought that one was in there a little bit more than that. Holy cow, that hurt.
So it's just the tiniest divot in each of these holes. Holes successfully marked. That's no good. Yeah, this is going to take a while. You might want to go get yourself a snack or something to come back. <laughs> Got to tip it over and clean it out occasionally because all of my filings are falling to the bottom. Yeah, and I don't have a bottoming tap, so I gotta kinda go by the feel for when I reach the bottom of this thing. Well, I'm not going to make you sit through the rest of this. Needless to say, two holes, about six minutes or three minutes a hole or so. Prepare to laugh like little girls as I try to get this on. Oh, wait. All right, this thing's heavy. And for those of you out there wondering, yes, there's probably a smarter way to do this. I just don't know what it is. And I'm in a hurry, and my back hurts, and wah, need like half a Tylenol or something, I don't know. Um, got plenty of thread depth if you look there. Plenty of depth. Got like three-eighths, half-inch worth of thread, and these are only quarter-twenty bolts. General rule of thumb is you want as many, um, you want as much depth of thread as you have width of bolt. So we only need a quarter-inch worth of thread to really uh, get all the strength that we can out of this bolt. We've gone ahead and modified the base and hopefully made it a lot more stiff, uh, adding rigidity to the machine. We've gone ahead and put in our dial indicator, and we're going to zero it out and do the exact same test as before and see if we get a better result this time. So, uh, okay. So, it, we only go to the zero mark, no matter how much we twist. Okay. Let's add our weight to it. Oh, God, let me get right Okay. <laughs> yeah. Still not still not wonky or janky at all. Alright, let's try again. Okay. So much, much better. Getting almost no well. Like a, maybe 20% of the deflection we saw before. Hey, 
thanks for watching the build video. Quick sneak peek of round two of stiffening. We've stiffened her this way, now we need to stiffen her this way. And we're going to use these T, aluminum T slot uh, extrusions. And we're going to drill and tap into here and down into here. And uh, should give us twice as much rigidity as before. So if you like the video, subscribe. It helps, it helps me out. Uh, share it if you found it enjoyable. Give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.